Hey folks, it's Doug here, bringing you a Mystic Eye Games unboxing of the recently uh, shipped Kickstarter version of Alter Quest by Blacklist Games. And uh, what I have here in front of you is the base game box. By the way, it's a really large, heavy box, followed by the stretch goals box that comes with the Kickstarter. Now, I did not get a copy of those. these. I Kickstarted it, so any of my opinions or anything I'm telling you right now is just basically my opinion, because I like uh, cooperative one to four player games, you know, for my channel and for myself, for my family, and this is one of the ones that looked just really fantastic. Uh, watched some playthroughs and things like that to get a feel for it, and then I backed it. So um, we're going to get into the box right now, and again, we're going to start with the main box, and then we're going to get on to the stretch goals box. I really don't know what is what's in them. I've forgotten after all this time, but I'm sure it's going to be worth the look. So let's uh, unbox these uh, huge boxes here. So first off, we're going to start with the Alter Quest main box. It says a cooperative. Game of Fantasy Adventure for one to four players by Adam and Brady Sadler. And this is uh, Blacklist Games use the modu modular deck system, which has been used in some of their other games. Um, I think Street Masters was one of them. And here's what it looks like on the back of the box. That's a heavy box. So it says, all across the troubled lands of Aritica, altars plague the forgotten places. The dank dungeons, ruined castles, endless caves, and power-hungry villains seek them out in hopes to harness the corrupted magic that emanates from them. While these mysterious stones are commonly believed to be physical manifestations of the godlike entities known as rhine, runes, rather, uh, they have been twisted and pushed to the surface of the earth by the vile lich queen, Sarah, that sleeps deep in, in Eridica. Heroes have taken it upon themselves to seek out these altars and secure them from the enemy's control. However, the powers once locked within the altars have already escaped into the world and ancient evils have already begun to stir. So that's the story of Alter Quest and it's going to be a big giant board. It kind of feels like a little bit like um, uh, Dungeon Quest and some other games like that where you have a big board that's static but uh, the way you play things out and move, push them on, and move them and place them on the board make it different each time, but the basic board is the same. This comes with one rule book, one story guide, one game board, 10 custom dice, 5 hero dice, 5 altar dice, 76 miniatures, 4 heroes, 45 minions, 3 villains, 16 doors, 7 features, and an altar. 25 card dividers, 15 base rings, that's for the characters, 374 tokens, that's a lot of tokens, and 446 cards. I'm not going to go through all the different types. It says, Altered Quest is a cooperative board game for one to four players, where the players take on the roles of daring heroes embarking on epic quests. With gameplay driven by designers Adam and Brad Bradley, uh, or Brady uh, Sadler, uh, Sadler's popular module deck system, Alter Quest offers a unique dungeon crawl experience in which players can choose to modularly con combine hero decks, villain decks, threat decks, and quest decks to create their own adventures, or embark on a narrative story to further explore the original fantasy world of Runa. Featuring four distinct heroes to play as three deadly villains to face, uh, face off against, three groups of threats to fight, and six varied quests to take on, and over 75 highly detailed miniatures, Alter Quest provides a wealth of gameplay options. Players use custom dice to resolve challenges, uh, challenging tasks and explore an environment filled with beautifully sculpted terrain pieces, adding a new level of immersion to the every game. Choose your hero deck and prepare yourself for adventure. Boom, there you go. And there's the artwork that shows some of the minis and that sort of thing. So let's pop the box open. Okay, let's get this big giant beast of a box open and see what's inside. Okay, so first off, of course, we have the rule book, uh, full color, glossy rule book. Uh, looks looks uh, very well laid out. Overview of cards. Overview of the cards in the threat deck and the villain deck, quest deck. So basically, very, very nice uh, way to look at the layout of the cards. I like it when they do this. Points to all the different features, allows you to quickly uh, look at that and get a feel for it. And then you, it talks about the hero's play area and how you play the hero. So the hero and their threat space right there. It talks about what to do for your first game. That's always good. Uh, here's a setup, an example for two players. That's nice. Uh, board overview, gameplay overview. So it gives you some quick hits on how the game is played, and then you get into more of the details. Yeah, villain turn, hero turn, threat turn. Nice additional rules. T the types of tests you have to make, how you make them. Fantastic. I love it. And not an incredibly long rule book for a pretty beefy game. It's 20 of oh, the campaign rules, campaign game. 
It's 27 pages. That's not terrible. Not terrible at all. And here's the story guide. We're not going to look at that because, well, it's got stories in it. And we don't want to ruin that. But anyway, this is the story guide. It tells the story of the campaign. Okay, so we'll leave it, leave it at that. And basically, as you adventure on, you're going to read different elements out of this book. Uh, then you got the tokens. Hmm, they look pretty good. Yeah, I, I like them. They're nice and clean. I'm going to look and see if there's something important in the box. A place for the tokens. I, I have to imagine that there is, because this isn't the kind of game that would go without giving you that with all the nice inserts and everything. So we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so these are the, the tokens are thick, very clean, nice looking tokens. Uh, I don't know what they all do, but there's a big staircase. And it looks like some NPCs, traps, other stuff. Again, um, I'm not sure this looks like money and health or energy and health or something. Uh, burning stuff down, torches, backpacks. Anyway, the, the tokens look good. I'll punch them out in a moment. But let's see if there's a, a space built in for them. It doesn't look like there is, actually. Wow, that's interesting. In fact, for all those tokens, I'm not sure if there is any space for them. But these are the miniatures. And then the first the first thing here you get is the... Uh, we'll open that up. And uh, we'll take a look at a few of the miniatures. This is, these are the heroes right here. Um, they're a kind of a softer plastic, which isn't usually quite as detailed, but they look pretty nice. Um, I mean, they're definitely more than acceptable for a board game, for sure. Um, yeah, they look pretty good. But it's a softer plastic. Which isn't a bad thing. It means they'll, they'll, they'll last longer. Looks like one of the characters is a vampire or something. Anyway, that's her right there. And then there's a little, like, halfling type character that you get to play. The, that's pretty detailed, actually, this halfling. I don't know how well you can see it. Um, and then there's uh, several monster figures. Let's pull out this big guy here. This looks like one of the big bad guys, some frog dude with a seat on top of him. Uh, yeah, now he's pretty darn detailed. You know, it's obviously it's easier to get that into the larger miniatures. Apparently he has some frog-like blowgun-looking minions, kind of like frog versions of kobolds. There's some frog-like creatures in D&D, &D, but I don't remember their name. And uh, here is um, more of a shaman-looking version of one of the frogs. Frog of peoples. And then there's a, a big guy here. Looks like he might be one of the one of the bosses. He's a pig person, or she. She is a pig person, looks like. And I don't mean, I'm not fat shaming. She's literally a pig. Okay, um, like, like, pig-like. Okay, and there's a, some of the train. There's a book bookcase right there. Pretty neat looking bookcase. There's uh, some chests. And I imagine in the, in the stretch goals box, there's going to be quite a few more of these types of things. Nice chests, and they all fit into their place very nicely. This looks like a mirror. You know, it would be cool is if you took a little, uh, that silver sheeting and put it on there so it was actually a mirror. That'd be pretty neat. Uh, some mushroom grove, I guess. Uh, what is this? This, this? this looks like, oh, weapons rack. So probably stuff you can acquire from during the game. Some kind of alchemy table or, or wizard's table. Nice. Very, very nice. The miniatures look great. I love the fact they had these accessories in. This looks like some kind of portal. This might be the, one of the altars or the altar. I'm not 100% sure. And then this looks like it could be an altar too, but I'm not sure about that either. This looks like something rather good. It looks like something the good guys might go to or venture to. All right, those are the, the top layer of miniatures. There is a whole bunch more that has doors and uh, other creatures to deal with. And that is this box here. And again, I don't see a space, uh, a particular storage for the tokens. I, I don't like that. But that's okay. We'll figure, I mean, there's, there's no baggies or anything. So I'm, I guess you just dump them all in that compartment in there. Uh, let's see what's in here. These uh, pig people. Yep. I don't know if they're pigs. I think they are. They're pigs. Yeah. Or boar, boar, maybe boar people. No, they look more like pigs. They don't look like wolves. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, they're, they're good looking. They look great. Uh, these look like some kind of oh, undead thing that I'm going to throw on the floor and try not to break. I noticed that the creature miniatures are a little harder plastic than the player miniatures. Player miniatures are softer than these. This looks, and these have actually, because of that, I think these have a little more detail in them. Um, looks like some kind of uh, undead, maybe a vampire or something like that. Hard to say. This looks like the male counterpart to that. There's quite a few of those. And then these uh, gargoyles on pillars look fantastic. Those look really nice. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. And then, uh, again, 
a bunch of doors. Oh, these are, okay, I like this a lot. These are already put together, and you don't have to mess with them. That is nice. Like, um, in um, Massive Darkness and some of the other, like, Simon games, they have all these doors that are great, and they can open and close, which is nice. These don't open and close, but they look cool, and you don't have to mess with them. So that's what's in the second set of miniatures that's in the, in the main game box. And the rest is space, which looks like it's for cards and dice and stuff. So we'll put these back and we'll take out this, we'll look at this other tray. Like this is the only tray that looks like, unless there's something under here, which there is not. There is actually no place specifically for the tokens. That's, uh, that's weird, because uh, there's a lot of tokens. Um, I suppose they could hear some, oh, maybe they're underneath the card decks. Yeah, okay. There's spaces for the tokens underneath the card decks. And then you have the, your dice here. So I imagine these are the Alta dice, I guess. And these look like they'd be the hero dice. Good quality. I like these uh, clear ones, even though they're very easy to see. With the white, the white back, uh, the white filled in spaces. And they're engraved, which is nice. I like that. And then we'll take a look at uh, card quality here. With uh, These are the card dividers, space dividers. So I'm going to open that. That's not really going to be very helpful to you to determine if you like this or not. But uh, here is, uh, these look like story cards. I'm going to leave, trying to find some cards that won't give anything away and still show off the artwork. I want to give the story away because it is story driven. Equipment cards. Can't go wrong there, right? Equipment cards are going to be just fine. I just need to open them. Okay, this looks like the hero, the Quella, is because I, I recognize the big hands on her from the miniature right there. So I don't know what she is, but she's got the ability of Skyfire. And these are, um, well, those are these are all her cards specifically. Yeah, neat. Okay, so this is her deck, her starting deck of cards. And then there's some equipment that appear to be general. Yeah, good. The okay, the artwork is super nice in this. Look at that. Kind of beautiful artwork on the, just for items. That is really nice looking. Very very nice artwork. Oh wow, look at that. Pretty. Ooh, nice, nice armor. Ooh, look at that cloak. That's cool. Yeah, this is very good art. So that's just the item cards. They look quite nice. So again, there's dividers. I'm going to have to get them all divided up. So I'm not going to take all the cards right, right now. I think it gives you an idea of the card quality. And it doesn't really help you with the rules to see it, though you do know that this, the one main character, all the characters do have their own uh, deck. And then here is the, the um, board. It's rather large and folds out a couple of spaces. So... <laughs> having a hard time getting it folded outright because it is big. Okay, um, wow, uh, okay, I don't want to go crazy here, but we're oh, trying to open the thing without going nuts. And there we have it, it's really, really big. Big board, big board, nice board. Uh, and you do use the same board every time, and that's okay because the variety is in how the scenarios get set up and all that good stuff, so it doesn't matter that the board is um, just one big board. And again, down in here, it does look like Underneath, there's plenty of space for the tokens. I was worried about that, as you know, because I said it several times. But that's what that looks like in the main box. So we'll uh, uh, we'll uh, take a look at what's in the, the Kickstarter box. I, mean, I don't like to make these these uh, unboxings too long. Just want to give you an idea of what's in there. We'll go into more into detail when we get to a playthrough. So I'm going to put the box lid back on this. You saw the rules in the story box. Now we're going to get into the stretch goals box. All right, here's the stretch goals box right here. It is heavier than the other box, and so I'm assuming it's, when they say all these miniatures, there's going to be a bunch more miniatures. Oh, expansion content. Well, let's look there first, okay? There is another game board, three colored altar dice, 135 miniatures. Wow, so there's a lot of min another 417 cards, 18 dividers, and four plastic rings, because there's apparently some other heroes in here, too. Good, good. So what is this? does this board look dramatically different or dramatically different than the other one? Uh, no, it looks similar, but uh, has all the same colors. I'll take a look at it in a minute. So here's what's in this box. You can see we've got a lot more. There's extra miniatures. There's colored altar dice. Lots and lots of cards. Same layout in, in what we got in here. So we'll just take this off. You can see all these are the characters. They seem to be... This is a horse-headed guy. I guess many of the characters are not human or human-like. They look like Animorphs or something. There's a dwarven looking guy. He looks pretty cool. That was a cool miniature. Again, these ones are made out of a softer plastic than the, some of the enemy miniatures, which is interesting. Well, these ones are actually harder. It's just the ones in the main box that were softer. Some kind of werewolf character. Again, I don't, I don't remember much about the game, so I'm going to have to learn 
again as I get ready to play it. And looks like this this expansion box or kicks the uh, stretch goal box gives you lots of other options like this clearly fire elemental figure. You know what I like about this is it gives you uh, miniatures for your other games. But there's an altar right there. God, so nice, nicely done. Can't wait to play this game. And this looks like this might be a companion to one of the heroes. Why do I say that? Because it's in the same color as the heroes, and that's just normal. Here's a, a big baddie. Ooh, yeah, he looks good. Nice, nicely done. Yeah, it's going to be fun. There's a cage. Does it open? Oh, it does. Look. It's got a top on it. You can open the cage and put things in it. Sweet. There is a, a tile of crates. Always useful in a fantasy game. There's a cauldron full of what, what looks like bubbling goo. Could be human parts. We'll have to see. Um, pile of treasure right here. That looks cool. That's really neat. Like a, I got a man that's just aching to be painted. I'm assuming this is one of the other altars. This is, see, that looks like kind of like an evil altar. That looks, uh, this, this thing looks like it might be good, you know, like good in nature. I don't know if the altars are good or bad or indifferent, but and this one looks like it's kind of evil too, like it would belong to a cemetery or something like in a cemetery or something like that. Those are the top line. I know most of you guys want to see the miniatures. You know that the cards are there. They're going to represent the characters, and there's a whole bunch of them. 400 to be exact. And then there's a, another there's another layer of enemies. And here it looks like there's two more layers of enemy figures. Um, and they, these do look like there's a lot of anamorphics. Like, like these are bird bad guys with dual blades. Can't wait to fight them. That looks fun. These look like big Viking characters with giant axes. Look at that. That is a really nice miniature. Super nice miniature. Good job, Alter Quest people. Made some really pretty minis here. And uh, popped a couple out. Okay, what is this? So we got two folks here. We got this female sorceress looking character and this, this bird beaked uh, sorcerer. I assume that uh, one is for different races and scenarios. I can't wait to see what these scenarios are like. It's going to be rather interesting. Actually, I think I got that backwards. I think that one belongs up here. This one belongs right here. Yep. There you go. And, okay, what else we got? We got some werewolf-looking guys here. They look pretty good. They're really detailed. Wow. It's hard to tell, I know, in the video. But they are quite detailed. Looks like an old uh, wizard with, or maybe a druid with a crook staff and a side or sickle on the end of it. Pretty nice. Can't wait to see what that guy is. And there's uh, these crossbow-wielding rogue-looking women. Pretty nice. Again, these miniatures are just great. I mean, I can show them to you. They're just gray right now. I need to paint the heck out of them, I think. Look at that. Wow. That'll get them painted before I actually do a playthrough, but they are quite cool. Uh, and then there's a whole nother layer of them down here, but it's even more because this is going to come up. So underneath the box, wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. Look at this, guys. Wow. Look at all of that. Spike traps. Who are these? I don't know what these are, but I'm trying to pull one out so I can see what it is. Ooh, they're in, they're in there. Too good. Too good. A big block of, okay, looks like a table. Cut a carving table or something. Look at these guys. Look like some twisted bird creature. Nice. Let's see. I'm not sure what this is. It looks like some kind of like um, crystal or something is bursting out of the ground. Have to see. There's a, some banners. They're all the same. There's nothing different about these four banners. They all look the same. Uh, this looks like a, some kind of spike trap or something. Yeah, very nice. Hmm. And what's what are these? Looks like eggs, egg nests. Okay. So, guys, there's still a lot of stuff. Uh, look like halfling rogues that might, you might have to take on. They're probably stealing from you. We'll see. Uh, some other. These look like uh, kobolds or something, like, I don't know, rat people or something like that. We'll see. I don't know what any of them are. I really don't. These look like elven archers of some kind. So I guess there's probably a storyline to go along with these two, I imagine. And then I'm not sure what these guys are, but they're done in the color of characters. So I imagine there's some kind of retainer. Oh, there's also some pit, um, like, uh, bear traps. 
bear traps in here. That was a lot of stuff in here. Wow, really good. And then there's these undead guys sitting there, zombies or mummies or undead guys crouching. And then it looks like there's also a pixie figure, of some kind. Horn, no, look like a little goat, horn goat person. Nice. So again, I don't know anything about the lore yet. It's something I'm going to have to work on and understand. But that's what's in that box. And then, of course, this goes on top of it with all the mini, mini cards and the dividers. And I have to get the cards out. But you can see they, they have the character art on them and the scenario and everything like that. I can't wait to dig into this game, guys. Looks fantastic. So I will put this back real quick. And then we'll take a look at them see if the board is radically different. I don't believe it is. It's just, a, it's just got a different layout to it for the other scenarios, I imagine. If you even need to do it by scenario, I don't know. It is, does look different. It's darker, um, not as bright or vibrant as the other board, which is cool. But there it is. Lots to do with Alter Quest. Cannot wait to dig into the rules and see how it plays. Anyway, guys, that is a very quick unboxing. I hope you like that. I hope that gave you enough information because I'm going to do more with this. So you'll see more soon. And uh, I will talk to you in the next episode of something. You might be watching my Night of the Living Dead playthrough. Uh, but if not, then you will get to see this coming up fairly soon. I want to see maybe these, these deserve to be painted. I want to see if I can get to that. But I doubt I will be able to. I'll probably just have to pay, play it unpainted. But we'll see. Anyway, thanks so much. Take care. And I'll talk to you in the next episode.